Hello everybody and welcome to Cubone, my name is Quentin. Welcome to this week's Helldivers 2 weekly recap. Today we'll be covering the week of July 24th through July 30th, and we could be looking at quite a big development with a potential eradication of half of the bot forces. One last thing before I begin, a minor and bittersweet announcement. I am likely going to be phasing out the Helldivers 2 content. I don't know what form that'll take, and it's not because I'm not enjoying it, I still very much am, but I'm going to be trying to phase in Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies content to prepare for Black Ops 6, as well as a little bit of Dragon Ball content, because with both Black Ops 6 and Budokai Tenkaichi 4, also known as Sparking Zero, coming out in October, I'm going to be covering a lot of those two games through pretty much the rest of the year after that. And that's not going to leave me with a lot of time to handle Helldivers content. I've already started this to some extent with the majority of my streams focusing around Call of Duty content. I've been playing through the Call of Duty Black Ops campaigns as well as doing Zombies content each week. But I'm also planning to do a little bit of Dragon Ball content as we get closer to October. But with no further ado, we can now get into this week's news. Beginning last Tuesday, we were making good progress on the planet Gakrux with over 22,000 divers raising it to over 36%, and with no major distractions, the plan was to have it cleared by Thursday. However, that distraction did come Wednesday afternoon in the form of three new defenses. The bugs were attacking Boar Rock in the Falstiff sector, and just as I feared, an attack on the Umlau sector began on Fenrir 3. Additionally, the bots continued undermining our efforts by attacking Chopesa 4. All of my images on screen were from the end of Wednesday, and Fenrir 3 3 was leading in player count, maxing out just over 20,000. We were just barely fending off the bug menace. Though the same could not be said for Borok or Chopesa 4, and that continued on through Thursday morning. Thankfully, divers were able to drive out the bugs around 7 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time Thursday morning. Chopesa 4 and Borok were not as lucky, both over 10% below the liberation rate needed. Instead, over 10,000 divers were fighting on Gakrux once again. The planet had risen to over 80 percent with an estimated five and a half hours left until liberation. Additionally, a dispatch released regarding our foothold in the bot front. Strategic update. The automatons are rapidly repairing their logistics and communication infrastructure. Following the fracturing of their domain by the Helldivers, their defenses will soon begin recovering. Since our major order into the bot front, we lost our hold on Acer Pass, Wasat, and Vega Bay, and we were close to losing our spot on Chopesa 4. With the bots redoubling their defenses, it seems seemed unlikely we would be able to follow through on clearing the bots from the southwest side of the front. On the plus side, the major order was going well with over 700 million bugs eliminated with over two days left to get another 300 million. As 4 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time came, we took Gakrux, successfully taking the final planet in the Jin Z sector, leaving the bug map a lot smaller as Friday began. Between 6 and 8 o'clock Mountain Daylight Time Friday morning, we made another leap of progress as we completed the major order. Now, I'll admit, I was unable to get on game in time for the briefing, so here is a shoddy recreation. Briefing. Success. The Helldivers have demonstrated a commitment to scientific progress equaled only by their fervor for democratic supremacy. Thanks to their efforts, the Ministry of Science has ample data to further ongoing terminated research efforts. While no clear method of termination has proved to produce more E710 than any other, our top scientists agree that establishing this beyond doubt was well worth the expenditure. However, with the large quantities of data gathered, one new finding did emerge. Rather than appearing randomly as expected, terminated mutations decreased in frequency as proximity to Super Earth increased. It appears that genetic variants are perpetuating from deep within terminated space. The explanation for this new phenomenon is yet unknown and more investigation is necessary. We could potentially be looking at some kind of terminated queen that is creating more and more powerful bugs as time goes on. The divers are going to have to redouble their efforts and really get going if we want to stop them from getting any more powerful. In the downtime after the major order, players began focusing on Estanu, nearly 15,000 divers getting us down to 27%, with 2,000 working on Chopesa 4, managing to make some fairly quick progress as the bots couldn't reinforce the planet. And as the day came to a close, the two planets had reached 55% and 69% respectively. 
Nice. As Saturday began, High Command gave us our next goal. While we had just taken out over 1 billion bugs in 4 days, this major order would require us to return to the bot front. Having to capture the 5 planets was Sot, Vega Bay, Wezen, or Weezen, Virilia 5, and Ustatu. Briefing! The automaton forces remain split in two. We must maintain the offensive momentum. However, the automatons have devised a new means by which to retain their stolen territory. Orbital cannons now stand across automaton territories, firing on our fleet and seeking to challenge our aerial superiority. The orbital cannons are targeting sea fair forces, extending extraction times. Fortunately, we've identified a weakness in the cannons targeting systems. The cannons rely on an interconnected system spread across multiple planets. Liberating one automaton planet will destabilize the entire system, allowing temporary return to normal extraction times as it recalibrates. Furthermore, if two automaton planets are liberated in short succession within 12 hours of each other, the array will will be severely destabilized, allowing shorter extraction times for the remainder of this order. Every day the automaton occupation continues. Another of our citizens' dreams are stolen. The Helldivers must deliver justice. Because of the new major order, Istanu unfortunately had to be abandoned, plateauing below 80%. Instead, over 14,000 divers rushed to Wasat, raising it rapidly and approaching 40% at the end of Saturday. Divers continued pushing through Sunday, getting Wasat to nearly 60%, with almost 15,000 divers by 10 a.m., with Astanu trailing far behind, with 8,000 divers seeing it drop to 74% by the same time, and all the way down to 68% by the end of the day. All of the major order planets, meanwhile, were fluctuating between positive and negative liberation rates. Wasat, leading the charge at 88%, expected to clear Monday morning. And earlier than expected, we did just that. At around 3.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, we liberated Wasat, activating a bonus by disabling the bot's orbital laser array. The liberation of a planet from the the automatons has destabilized the orbital cannon targeting array. Extraction times will return to normal for the next 12 hours. By 7 a.m., almost 11,000 divers had moved to Vega Bay, with the planet already over 20%, though nearly 5,000 continued fighting on Astonic, desperately trying to slow its fall. By Monday night, Vega Bay had risen to 62%, slowing only slightly as the orbital bonus ran out, though still expected to be free in the early hours of Tuesday. This time it took slightly longer than expected, but by 8 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, Vega Bay was successfully liberated. Also, Tuesday morning, a new war bond was announced, the Freedom's Flame War Bond. This won't be a full breakdown, but I am excited to see some of these new weapons. I love the flamethrower, so being able to bring in a full flame loadout will be <laughs> incredible. <laughs> but to wrap up the news, we moved quickly to Vega Bay through Tuesday, and by the time of editing, 18,000 divers had raised the system to almost 45%, estimated to be done by Wednesday morning, and by the time this video goes up, we will likely have moved on to Wezen, or Wezen. And that's all I've got for this Helldivers 2 weekly recap. As I said at the beginning of the video, it's likely that I'm going to start phasing these out, whether that takes the form of shorter less detailed episodes, less frequent uploads, or potentially not doing these any further. But I will still be doing next week's episode, so you can still look forward to that Wednesday, same time as always. That said, remember to like and subscribe, and if you want to see more of these, remember I do stream both here and Twitch every Thursday at 4 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, every Friday at 6 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. This week, we are going to be continuing and possibly finishing the Black Ops Cold War campaign on Thursday. On Friday, we're going to be playing through the modern Warfare Zombies Act 3 finisher, and maybe getting started on some Dark Ether content. And on Sunday, I haven't fully decided whether or not we're going to be finishing the Ancient Evil Easter Egg, as we weren't able to complete it last time, or moving on to the Aether storyline of Black Ops 4 with Blood of the Dead. Either way, we will see, and that's all I've got to say for you guys today. So remember to be gay, do crimes, and we will see you next time. What was that? <laughs>